Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are working on the legs for the desk and I'm loving how this is coming out. We're gonna be looking at the bent lamination and how does this all come together because this is a little bit different. Uh, how do you actually do this without steaming it? So let's dive in and take a look at, well, making this. Now, for this project, we are going to be doing a lot of resawing. And when I mean a lot of resawing, I mean a lot of resawing. Uh, so I'm going to be sharpening my saw. This is a handsaw. Uh, it is a four PPI handsaw, uh, very big and aggressive rip cut. And we're going to be working with this a lot. I think I used this saw for, oh, uh, probably somewhere around 20 hours worth of sawing to resaw down all of these quarter inch planks. So we're cutting them all down to quarter inch, um, and they are four foot long by three and a half inches wide. Um, now I, I could use my frame saw, but actually I, I much prefer to use the hand saw for this. Uh, it's just one of these things that uh, I, I, I know uh, pretty well and works works just as easy. And I can use it left-handed or I can use it right-handed. And for this three and a half inch wide, using the hand saw really isn't that much different from using the Rubo style frame saw. And so we are cutting, and I'm actually cutting these in pairs because I'm cutting them out of a blank that is um, six quarters thick. So it allows me to cut down one side and cut down the other side and uh, keep going. And if you want to watch this live, this is um, something that I have on uh, the patrons and members on the main channel. So they uh, get the chance to actually watch in the shop live when I am recording. Now we want to plane this down. Now that we have one side is previously smooth, the other side needs to be flattened down. And so we're just going to plane it down to the marks from the marking gauge until we have a piece that is one quarter inch thick by four foot long. And that's about it for the stick. And then it's rinse and repeat because I need six of these for each of the blanks that I'm making. I'm making four blanks, so that's 24 of these that I need to rip out. Next thing I need to do is create a form for the bending. And so I'm going to be making this out of some scrap 2x4s that I have on hand. And these can be assembled together. Now I have an entire video where I go into how to do bent lamination. So if you want to see that, I'll leave a link to that down below. Uh, but what we're going to be doing in this is making a form which has a backboard and then several boards sticking out. Oh yeah, I'm using a drill. <laughs> and then we're going to bend it to form. But um, this one was a bit too aggressive, so I needed to actually change the form. I made a couple extras just to, uh, to, to play with it and find the exact size. Now, I, again, I have an entire video showing the, the actual bending process, if you want to see that. So after, after bending it all and uh, making the, the form to fit, we can take everything out of it. And it was a bit of an ordeal to come up with this, uh, this form design, but once I have it, everything worked really well, and each bend was very quick and easy after that, using the strap to lock everything in place. Once it's loosened up, here you can see that's the total amount of back bend. It really wasn't much at all. And there's our piece. Now we need to plane this down to thickness because uh, it's about uh, three and a half inches wide and I want to take it down to about three inches wide. So to cut through most of it, I'm actually going to be using a scrub plane, pinching it into place on the bench between two dogs um, and then a third dog at the arch it actually holds it in place really, really well. The only problem is the archway is at the far side of the bench. So I do a lot of leaning over the bench. So we're planing through the epoxy, and in some cases it's actually easier to pull because you're working out at arm's length, so it's just a little bit easier to, to work that way. Scrape it down. Once we get close to the right thickness, then we can bring in the regular plane and get rid of all the marks from the scrub plane and bring it down to that three inch thick piece that we want to work with. Yay, now we're getting curl from one end to the other. I love those shavings, you can see all the thicknesses. Next we want to set up the leg frame and actually do all of the marking. I want to make sure that the outriggers um, are at 90 degrees to the back vertical piece. So we can lock it all in place with some hold fast on the bench. 
and then make sure to label your pieces so that they're all going the right way. Then we're going to lay this arch onto the uh, onto the leg structure and make sure that everything is fitting in place. This will allow us to transfer exactly where the arch intersects with the, the leg structure. So we're going to mark on the leg structure where the arch intersects with it, and then we're going to mark on the arch where the legs intersect with it. And this way I can have lines that I can transfer all the way across. I want to cut off the excess on the arch, and so with that mark I can draw exactly how the lines cut all the way across this. I can mark all the way around this arch, and then we can cut off this excess. And this way, the arch um, dead ends at the floor and then at the underside of the bench. The uh, the cut on this may seem really really scary as it is a. Uh, um, is a weird angle on a curved surface but really if you have a line to cut to you just draw the line and cut to that line and that's really all we're, we're worried about and uh, just like that you've got your piece cut off a little bit of planing work to get rid of the saw marks and we're good to go and continue on now we need to start working on the joinery between the arch and the leg structure. On the leg we have the lines drawn from where the arch intersects and we also need to have a bottom out line where the, the, well, the arch bottoms out onto it. And then on the, the arch we need to cut in the bridle joint. And so this is a, a slot coming down either side that is the width of the thickness of the leg. Um, once we have that in place then we can cut down on either side of this. So this is the exact same thickness as the, the leg piece that it will be intersecting and these will um, double bridle joint into each other. Then to chop it out we just need to be very very careful because um, we're working on the end of a piece here. And I just need to clamp this down a little bit tighter but every pound it will drive down a little ways until eventually we can chop it out and clean out the surface in between. Bring everything right back to those lines so we get a nice clean surface for this to bed down onto that leg. Chisel it out, clean it out, and then come in with a file and do the detail work to make sure we get a nice tight fit. I have a scrap piece of the leg to make sure that it is the right thickness. If it's too tight, we come in and file it out until it's a nice slide all the way down and it fits with a nice flat bed on the bottom. Now over on the foot, we need to move our lines all the way around this. So we have the lines on one side uh, where the arch will intersect with it, but then on the other side we also need to draw the lines where the arch will intersect with it. Because we're going to be cutting down the half lap, uh, the, the bridle joint on this, except for it is a curved bridle joint. But because of the curve on this is not that aggressive, um, we can actually still use a straight saw to cut down. I'm only cutting down about an inch, uh, inch and a half down into this. And so we can follow the lines that we drew. Remember, if you can draw a line, then you can cut to it. And so we'll then cut straight down and then chisel out that piece. Put in some stop cuts so that we don't, uh, we don't splinter out past them. And then break off the piece and then chisel back to it. Then once that has all been cleared out, we can then come into the file just like we did before, clean it all out, and make sure that these slide down in. And just like that, we have a really nice tight fit that I am very, very happy with. Then just rinse and repeat for the other side and assemble the piece together. And just like that, we have the leg structure. And that is what we are what we're looking for. Next thing we need to do is we're going to work on the draw bore. Uh, because we're going to be draw boring these together. The leg structure will be a permanent structure that will be glued together. So we're going to drill a hole all the way through this from one side to the other. And then we're going to offset the hole in the tenon. So I'm not putting the tenon in here because it needs to be in another place. Then we can slide the tenon into the hole, put the auger bit into the mortising hole and drive in a little tap. Um, this way I have a location. Then we're going to move the auger bit a little bit closer to the shoulder, just an eighth inch or so, maybe less than that even. And this way we have a hole that is offset from the hole in the mortise. When we drive a pin in, it will suck these together. Now that we have all that done, it's time for the assembly. Make sure everything is just the way we want it uh, because the leg structure is basically done other than the finishing tips. So we can put either piece on to the foot and top and then drive those into the vertical and there we have it. There's our leg structure. 
So there you have it. This is, um, I, I'm absolutely in love with how this is coming out. I'm really looking forward to having both legs together and then putting the back spanner in. So next time we'll actually be doing the bending of the back beam um, as well as the connector that goes between them. So we're gonna be having a good bit of fun. So hopefully by the end of the next video, we will have the base all done and ready to go together, probably even gluing it together. Uh, so yes, uh, pff, I'm, I'm in love with this. I, I've been thinking through a bunch of different ideas of this and trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do for the bending of this arch. And I'm, I'm really, really happy with how it came out. I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas on this. Uh, what would you do differently? What is something that was kind of a, an odd idea on this? I'd love to hear those. Let me know those down in the comments below. Also, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel is still here. And uh, without the patrons on Patreon, Wood by Right would not be here today. So thank you for that. It is the largest supporter and the reason why uh, we can do this on this channel and have a lot more talking and, and teaching as we go. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon, go down below and also say thank you to everyone scrolling over here on the side. So I think that'll do it, about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Ah, okay, this is a good one because today we've got a leg up on everyone else.